All right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning. Hi, how you doing? Hold on. There you go, and I cut that out probably. Let's hope. So, good morning. Uh, I took melatonin last night. Melatonin. Again last night, and I really, I sort of got it's building up in my system because I am more tired every morning. This morning, I'm practically unconscious, but I have my coffee, which is really hot. I'm going to sip it, and I'm going to hate that. Mmm, that's really hot. I hate that. Anyway, uh, how you doing? It's Tuesday morning. It's uh, April 7th, right? We're all living with the Rona. I actually got to see one of my favorite neighbors today. Um, I haven't seen too much of my neighbors. Uh, certainly, you know, see them from afar and wave hi. <laughs> Uh, but, um, I actually got to sit out and talk with one of my neighbors, stand out and talk with one of my neighbors today who I haven't seen in about, maybe about a month. And we, we spoke through the magic of the dog's lead. It just extended all the way out because my dog, Cha Cha, loves this guy, Rick. He just, she just loves Rick and Rick loves her, which works out really well. So she ran over to visit. By the way, um, I'm not wearing the bathrobe today. It just, I didn't want to run up and get it. What can I tell you? Just leave me alone. Anyway, um, it, it was it was nice to actually, you know, talk to another human being. <sighs> um, you know, as a writer, I, I'm alone most of the time, and it's fine, and I'm used to that. But when everybody else has to be alone, and I am left, you know, without anyone to talk to, I end up talking to you. So that's how this happened. Hmm. Anyway, that's... In the United States, are over 11,000 now. There's over a million cases worldwide and growing uh, rapidly. Um, Vicky and I are still feeling pretty good. And and at this point, my goal has become to stay healthy until the apex, at which case I will, uh, I'll, I'll catch it, I'll collapse, I'll need every bit of care they have, but that's okay, because everybody will be leaving the hospital. They'll be like, what are we going to do with all these respirators or whatever the hell? And I'll be like, um, hey, I got two lungs right here. Um... Anyway, uh, God, I am so tired. I'm literally losing the train of my thought for a yawn. So, I was, uh, I was really busy yesterday. I sat here and I recorded about an hour and 15 minutes worth of video. Wow, that's hot. I'm just going to put this down. So, between, um, between talking to you yesterday morning and then reading... I did all that video and I just ran it together, right? As one long video. I just moved from one thing to the next and uh, finished, got it upstairs to my computer, found out that it was way too big a file for Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox is great for pictures, not so great for over a gig of video. Um, so between Vicky and I, we figured out a way to get the video off the phone and onto the computer. And um, which should be easy, right? Should be. Um, Got the video around 1 or 2 yesterday afternoon, which is when I started working on it. And I didn't finish until, I think, around 10 o'clock last night. Uh, so today, I will be doing a lot less than I did yesterday. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna talk for only, only a few minutes. I don't even have a timer today. This is how confident I am that I don't want to go for a very long time. And watch, I'm going to be talking for like a half hour. Anyway, uh, I did a lot of thinking yesterday on, on my good friend... A Grand Canyon. I read half of chapter one. And when I titled this One Man's Journey Through Depression, I won't kidding. Um, it really was. And I had no way of knowing that that journey through depression was even going to end at that time, uh, if it did. I think it took a little longer than the confines of this book. But I went through it yesterday night um, almost page by page, and realized that uh, this was a very depressing time of my life. This was around 2002, 2003, 2004. Um, actually, and be before that, of course, because yesterday I was reading to you about Teresa, who was just the sweetest, loveliest girl. And I'm so, so glad that she ended up being living, she ended up living a happy life and being a happy person and that, that makes me happy. Um, but my point, if I could get to it, on all of this fucking melatonin, 
or through all this melatonin. Um, my point is that uh, I wrote this book when I was nearly 40, okay? In my late 30s. 20 years before that, I was in my late teens. I was nearly 20. The difference between t nearly 20 and nearly 40 is astronomical. And I realized last night that the difference between nearly 40 and nearly 60, I hate to use those words, but come on, I'm gonna be 55 this year. The difference is just as profound. You don't think about it. You think, oh, I'm an adult, and I'll continue to be an adult. No, 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 no. I'm a big fan of that Shakespeare quote uh, that I can't remember now. You ever notice that when you try to remember quotes, they just go right out of your head. Uh, but every man, every person, plays many roles. I'm, I'm paraphrasing at this point. Uh, every person plays many roles in their lives, and I'm a big fan of that sentiment. In my, uh, in, in my book, um, Illumination, which I had to look down to to get the title, uh, I talk about the different, uh, the different lives that I've lived in my lifetime, uh, because I feel like, you know, so many things can only be encapsulated by saying that was another life. Like, Mary to Rosa, that was a completely different lifetime. My time as an actor, different life. My teenage years, different life. And this, sadly, took place in a different lifetime. It happened to a different Ken LaSalle. I appreciate all the work I put into this. And if you're f facing depression, maybe this would be good for you. But it's not good for me because I'm not, and I don't want to be depressed. And I read through this, and uh, I read, okay, here, let's just, let's just skim, shall we? We'll just skim. Okay, so chapter two is about living with Rosa, and I'm sure that, that chapter was full of fun, full of great, the chapter three is the end of my life with Rosa. Oh, that's, that's just, that's bound to be full of happy, happy, happy thoughts. And then, yes, I'm trying to find the next chapter, hold on, okay. Next chapter, okay, is about the girl I cheated with uh, I cheated on Rosa with. Great. Next chapter, trying to get back to those. It's just on and on and on. It keeps going. It's relentless. The, the horrible things I did to myself in my life by not being willing to be happy, um, it's depressing. And so I'm reading through this book last night and looking through it and, uh, and now I'm now I'm getting to the Grand Canyon where I tried to kill myself, and that's that's always fun. Um, but I I went through this book, and I got to tell you, I I can't read this anymore. I can't read this to you. I wish I could, uh, but it's not me. And at one time it was, and it marks a very important transition in my life from being someone who hated life to being someone who was pro-life, ha ha ha, no. Um, <laughs> to being someone who embraced and, and accepted life. So later today, later today, in a few minutes, when I finish talking to you, um, I'm going to start reading one more chapter of this book. It's called, it's chapter 18, it's called A Life Like No Other. And it's all about my life, my early days with Vicky. And that, I would like to revisit. That is worth reading for me. Um, in the midst of the worst pandemic in a century, I get to be here with Vic and, you know, sometimes I just feel like I'm cheating, you know? <laughs> just, I feel bad because there's people out there who are suffering and I am blessed at this time to be able to I mean, shit, talk to you, right? So that's that's pretty much my thought for the day. I'm going to read this one more time, and then, uh, and then tomorrow I'll move on to another book. I'm sorry I didn't read as much of this book as I thought I would, or, or maybe that you thought I would, um, but just try to understand that there are books that, as a writer, you need to write at certain times in your life. It's like extracting poison. And that was my goal at the time, to extract all the poison, to get it all out, put it in a book, lock it away. Um, and I'm glad I did that. And I'm glad it's there. And I'm glad I'm not reading it anymore. So there you go. Uh, I hope that uh, your Tuesday goes well. 
a lot of word out today uh, that we may be hitting our apex individually as states and, and um, as a country a little sooner than worst case scenario. And I really hope so. And I hope you're doing well. And I hope you are good to yourself, kind to others, and help and make the world a better place. I'm going to try to wake up, I swear to God. And I'll see you tomorrow.